This is the GIS News for Friday, September 5th, 2014. I am Abigail McIntyre. In the headlines, U.S. and Canadian travel agents getting the experience of a lifetime complements sandals. Physical planning unit to undertake project in to provide guidelines for engineering designs. And an exchange of roles at the Labor Department as month-long celebrations continue. Details after the break. A trip to remember, that's what 15 travel groups from the U.S. and Canada will experience as part of a mass familiarization visit. Details from Janelle Hamlet. Seeing was truly believing for the 140 travel agents who formed part of the Sandals Lasor's first mega farm experience. The mass familiarization visits began on September 4 for the Grenada Resort and are expected to run all the way through the month of November, giving 15 groups of travel experts from the United States and Canada an up-close and personal experience of the newest and most luxurious of the Sandals chain of resorts. Prior to Grenada, the agents visited Sandals establishments in the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos, but it is in Grenada that they were hosted to a personal visit and spirited send-off by Grenada's own Minister for Tourism and Civil Aviation, the Honorable Alexandra Otwe Noel. Well, welcome to Grenada. Are you having a good time? Yeah. You found paradise. I understand this is the last stop. So we should just keep you here, shouldn't we? Uh, well, let me start by saying it is an absolute pleasure to have you here in Grenada. My name is Alexandra Otway Noel, and I am the Minister of Tourism and Civil Aviation. And I want you to know how important you all are to me. I was this morning chairing a meeting in Barbados. I jumped on a plane that was just about 30 minutes late, I ran to a meeting and then here I am because I said I have to go. I told all the ministers that were in Barbados at this meeting that I have 160 travel agents coming from Boston and there is no way that I'm not going to be there to wish them a warm welcome. Sandals Lasor's general manager, Peter Fraser, says that for the last three decades, Sandals has been engaging travel agents on these courtesy trips. He says he doesn't know where the company would have been without them. The general manager says the benefits to be derived from these trips will not only be felt by the Sandals Resort, but will spill over into the entire tourism sector and consequently the local economy. The Grenada Tourism Authority has teamed up with Sandals and the Grenada Airports Authority from day one to welcome the first batch. Chief Executive Officer Rudy Grant says that the authority has made it their duty to give the travel agents the pure Grenada experience from the time they landed to the time of takeoff. It is strongly evident that the agents are charged and excited to get back to their offices to begin marketing Grenada to their clients. For GIS News, I am Janel Hamlet reporting. Thank you, Janel. Grenada's electricity company, Grandlec, continues to give back to the community. On Friday, the company visited the Bonaire Government School in St. Mark to distribute school supplies to the students. This donation came from about a request by the St. Mark Football League to Grenlec some time ago. Principal of the school, Terry Francis, hopes Friday's donation is the start of a budding relationship between Bonaire Government and Grenlec. I know government cannot do all. 
I know that we are challenged right now because of the economic downturn, okay? But I know that Greenet is reaching out. We at Bonnet Government School would have submitted a, a request for, for repairs to our school. But it seems maybe that the time the request went out, maybe Greenet would have exhausted the budget already, okay? But we are still happy today that Greenet, even though they have exhausted the budget, they have seen the need to collaborate together with the St. Max Football League to make a presentation to Bonnet Government School and to the students in particular. So we are very happy to Grand Lake for that contribution. Mr. Francis says the school faces a number of challenges, including rodent infestation and leaking roofs, and is in need of a computer lab for students and a fire escape. Parliamentary Representative for St. Mark, Dr. Clarice Medes cohen says Grenlake has, instru has been instrumental in contributing to the development of her constituency. Grenlake, you have done so much throughout Grenada, Caracuan, Viti, Martinique. You have done quite a lot in St. Mark. You gave us a basketball court in Moran. Mr. Kobe might not know that, so we have to talk about that. And very soon we'll have the lighting of the um, back the playing field at Nonpareil. You give to the home for the age, child memorial, and other things that you do. So children at the back, those who are like is doing a good job, wave the hand again. Right, and let us give them a round of applause. Very good. The physical planning unit is about to undertake a project that will provide guidelines for engineering designs in relation to soil database. Fabian Purcell, who is attached to the unit, says this is to ensure compliance with the building code. He was a guest on the GIS Spice Morning Show on Friday. At the end of this month, we will have some, it's a project that is um, supported by the World Bank, is grant funding. Um, we're going to have some students from the University of 20, ITC in Holland, that will be assisting us in, in that regard. So this is one of um, our focus for the latter part of this year and earlier next year, to provide information as it relates to mitigation planning for the public. And we are having support through the World Bank Initiative and um, the University of 20 ITC. Another member of the department, Lawrence Lalji, says there are some builders who still do not adhere to the rules of the building code, but he is heartened that there is greater compliance in construction since Hurricane Ivan. The, the building code um, was launched before even Ivan. Mm -hmm. All these details were there, and the builders are expected to follow these details. But I take it for granted because we never had a, a disaster like um, uh, Ivan. Yes. But as I said, from since then, the, the, the information is still in the code. It was just a matter of implementation. Yes. So as you rightly say, yes, they are more aware of that now, even the homeowners, because they want to ensure, and if they're not sure, they're going to ask questions. And sometimes they call our office to ask these questions, whether or not, or sometimes they call us to come and pay a visit to find out whether or not the builder are building according to their plan. Mm -hmm. Lalji adds that when purchasing land for development, the property must be approved by the physical planning unit. If people are not sure um, how to develop these lands, please call the unit and, and we can furnish you with this information because it, it's important. If you, if, you, if you look at our, our, our road network in Grenada, and a lot of people out there, the public generally uh, probably is not aware, but we have roads that has been categorized on a different section, like we have our original road, which we call our main roads. Mm -hmm. uh, buildings supposed to be sited 30 feet from the middle of that road. Um, some of the buildings that you would have seen now throughout the country does not comply to that. Then we have the district road, um, where people need to keep 26 feet from the middle of the road. And even with fence wall, that is so important. Some people tend to feel it; they want to fence their property, that they can fence the property right up to the edge of the road. This is not so. There is a certain distance you need to keep from the middle of the road. And if I am saying to homeowners, if you're not quite sure, please call the unit and we will give you the correct information. His vehicle is in good working condition and was parked in its usual place on Thursday. But someone else was in the Labour Commissioner's chair dealing with the tough labour matters while he went delivering the meals without his vehicle. Karen Marine Alexander explains. 
He took up the role of the office attendant, doing the duties in the same fashion as the office attendant in his ministry does. My role today, our function is to perform the role of the, the office attendant and go back to the basic principles of the fundamental rights of the ILO, that there should be no discrimination regarding job. And I will play the role the, as, as the office attendant today to ensure that, as I said, there should be no discrimination and to get a general feeling how an officer an officer attendant will perform on a daily basis. And I went to the post office, I went to the Ministry of Finance, I went to the PSC and collect mails, and then I went to the park, the stadium, to collect mails. What's more interesting, the Labour Commissioner had to hitchhike. I had a hitch ride, you know, and that's to show all the, the, the difficulties an attendant would, would go through on a daily basis if the ministry doesn't have a vehicle, and we don't have a vehicle in the ministry, we have to use other ministries, and I had to say hitch a ride. This as officers of the Ministry of Labor switched their functions at the office for one day in what they call the changing roles, one of the activities for Labor Month 2014. The Mr. Griffith says in many institutions the role of an office attendant is often overlooked, but their role is very important in the workplace. They deal with meals and other important documents. And if he doesn't treat workers, generally speaking, if he don't treat workers fairly and squarely, and in particular, office attendant, then obviously there will be a, 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 a hitch in the link of the chain because they transport or they deliver documents, serious papers that deals with matters pertaining to critical issues. And if you don't treat them right, although there may be a book for the person receiving the document to sign off on, they may destroy it or they may dump it as the case may be. And then they can always come back and say that it was delivered. Karen Moraine Alexander reporting for the GIS News. Thank you, Karen, for that report. Meantime, Labor Commissioner Mr. Cyrus Griffith says according to the ILO, every worker should have equal opportunity at the workplace with no discrimination. He encouraged other institutions to get involved in changing roles at their office to experience and understand what other employees have to deal with on a daily basis. So we have to treat each person fairly and squarely regarding no matter what the circumstances may be and try to get a feeling in the different position will give you more satisfaction <clears throat> when you're dealing with issues in your ministry or in, or in your institution to ensure that everyone is treated fair and when they hear these people come with some complaints or some things that they are not happy with, then you will understand because you were there, you, you performed that role at a particular day and time and you have a general feeling that, yes, this is it. So I, I was there, and I felt it, and now they are there. So you have a general understanding of the whole scenario. At the Ministry of Labor, the entire staff had their functions changed. Together with the Labor Commissioner changing to the role of the office attendant, the registry clerk became the permanent secretary, and one of the work permit clerks became the minister's secretary, to name a few, just for one day. My role is registry clerk, and PS role is far greater than that of registry, but, you know, trying to cope. This is normal, usual clerical duties, with the added benefit of meeting the minister on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Since Labor Month activities began, staff has been involved in walkabouts in St. George's and Grand Anse, and workers have also made presentations at the St. David's Catholic Secondary School and visited the home for the age in Crowshoe, St. Andrew. On Monday, September 8, the Labor Commissioner and other senior officers will be on GBN's Beyond the Headlines, while other officers will be on the Sister Isle of Karakou until September 11, conducting a workshop on safety and health, visit schools, host the Labor Fair, and meet with employers with pending matters at the ministry. You're watching the GIS News. We'll be right back.